there's something about worship. 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 Worshiping the Lord. Worship. It's something in that arena where you must go beyond yourself. Everyone say beyond yourself. Come on, say it with me. Beyond yourself. Amen. So in this area of worship, there's that place where you're going beyond yourself. And this is what God is asking for. He's looking for people who are willing to go beyond themselves. If you're still caught up in yourself, you can't worship. You're all, you're all about you. The Bible says that he looks for those who worship me in truth and spirit. You want the Father looking for you or the devil? <laughs> Hello? You know, these days it's hard to even get people to go to church. Because they're so caught up in themselves, they can't get beyond themselves. They're more interested in TV ministry than they are in God's true presence. You know, the Bible tells us in his presence we get a heart change. Everything changes. We get refreshed, renewed. But there's a price to pay. It's called worship. There's a price to everything. And there's something that going beyond yourself takes faith. And faith is the currency of heaven, right? You can't buy nothing without faith. So how are you going to get faith? You've got to go beyond yourself. Amen? Go to Philippians 3, please. 1. And if you hear the voice of the stranger say to me, man, this worship is too long. <laughs> Don't agree. <laughs> Don't agree. You're going to open the door to the enemy. And this worship is the only reason why it's too long for people because they ain't dead. They can't go beyond themselves. They're short-sighted. They can't be, go on beyond their fingertips. They can't cross over. You know, there's people that are believers 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 years and they've never crossed over once. Not once. Man, but when there's a crossover, there's a difference. That's what we, we look for every time is to cross over. Amen? Remember the Israelites, everything was about crossing over. They had to cross over the Red Sea, the Jordan, crossing over. Your focus is to cross over. You can't change without a crossover. Because a crossover brings an exchange. Philippians 3, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is what? Safe. Beware of dogs. Now, he doesn't mean barking dogs. Amen? They're going to come out, little choo-choo wallows are going to grab your ankles. No. No. He means demonized individuals, because that's the word dog means. Beware of evil workers. Beware of mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. That means you are living beyond yourself. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, yeah, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Conce he was so zealous for killing Christians. Concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these things I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as what? 
rubbish that I may gain Christ, the anointing, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Reaching beyond yourself. Your counter abilities. Your strategies. Your understandings. Your strengths. See, limitations of the carnal thinking, not spiritual thinking. Prevents you from moving, going beyond yourself. Does everybody understand that? We need to live in the spiritual mind of Christ that lives in faith and obedience to his voice. What a time of season we're in right now. People are being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Amen? The word tells us and warns us about it. They're so caught up in themselves. You know, fear draws people to make wrong choices. And fear promotes an individual to retract to themselves so they can't go beyond themselves. You know, how many times have you tried to calculate to get free? You were trying to work it out yourself instead of work out your salvation. I tried multiple times to get free from drugs and alcohol. I always thought if I made enough money, I'd be fine. But the more money I made, the more dope I used. It didn't work. I could make $1,000 a day and use it. So it didn't matter. Because I was still caught up in myself. How am I going to make money? How am I going to do this? How am I gonna, what does the word tell, warns us? Don't worry about stuff like that. What you're going to wear, what you're going to eat. Amen? Those are individuals that cannot get beyond themselves. That's what the world is like. That's what you see all over the place. They can't reach beyond themselves. They call them spiritual. They think they're religious. Well, they are religious. What the word religion means, bondage anyway. They live a life of management, not a life of freedom. They're managing their demons, not free. Is everybody okay? James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all what? Joy. When you fall into various trials, not if. When. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance or patience. That's what the trial is for. But let patience have its what? Perfect work. That you See, but when, when things come to people, when various trials fall into people, they have a tendency to retract into themselves and try and figure it out. <clears throat> Instead of looking to the Lord to say, Lord, what is it? Or count it joy. Hallelujah. God's got a plan. I, it's uh, their challenges. God is just challenging us to grow. But let patience have its perfect work that you may perf be perfect in what? Complete. Lacking nothing. You are in a position where you know God is going to provide everything you need. You don't have to worry about anything. And when it's time, he's going to send it to you. Something will occur. It's supernatural. See, people still live in natural because they can't live beyond themselves. When you begin to live beyond yourself, you are living supernatural. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. Everything's about faith. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded, unstable in all of his ways. Somebody see that. Count it all joy 
reaching beyond yourself. It's a test of faith to purchase heavenly things. Again, faith is the currency of heaven. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in what? Earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So can the power be of God if you can't go beyond yourself? No. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Ooh. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. I'll tell you, a man that's been dying daily is Donald Trump. That man for the last three and a half years or whatever, he has been persecuted, lied about, and everything. Because he's God's anointed man. But people can't see that. People that don't see it are, can't see beyond themselves. They can't reach beyond themselves. But it's the prayers of the saints that keep him. Does everybody understand? It's the prayers of the saints. Because without prayer, you can't do nothing. Hallelujah. The power of God and not of us. Amen. Many retract into self. When challenges arise, many, and then they can't go beyond themselves. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, and verse 1, please. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be what? Entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you are circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again. Now, in this, he's also saying, look it. It's not your works. It's your obedience. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the law. You have become a strain from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law or by your works. You have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by what? By faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him. Who calls you? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. We are justified by his, you know, I mean, people fall in that place of self-justification by their gifts and works. They cannot reach beyond themselves. You must not, to reach beyond yourself, you must be able to see beyond yourself. Is everybody with me? You must be able to what? See beyond yourself. In other words, you know, the Bible tells us forgive. Amen? There are times when you must see through someone else's eyes so that you can see what they're going through. So many times people can't see beyond themselves because they're just caught up in themselves. They can't understand and see what the other person is going through or what they're seeing. And, by, and the Word tells us, not only will we be able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us, but you and I should be able to see these things as long as we're not seeing beyond ourselves. But again, you, go, you must be beyond your, being able to reach beyond yourself. In other words, you may be talking to someone who's struggling with all kinds of stuff. They may be saying all kinds of goofy stuff. But you know what? Are you truly seeing through their eyes also or what they see? And as you begin to see what they see, 
you may begin to understand where they're at. Then you can truly minister to that person instead of bringing your justification towards that person or your opinion. Amen? Praise God. Philippians 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of what? One mind. In other words, you can't do that if you're, you can't go beyond yourself because you can't see beyond yourself. Amen? You'll never truly understand where somebody's coming from. You'll be so opinionated about everything. And you will make wrong decisions and choices. Let nothing be done through what? Selfish ambitions and conceit. Bunch of prideful individuals. But in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of what? Of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. That's powerful. Looking out for others beyond yourself. Again, you can't not see beyond if you can't go beyond, if you're not reaching beyond. There must be a desire there. James 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion in everything are there. Confusion in every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. You know what willing to yield means? Being able to see. Going beyond yourself. Full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Are you a peacemaker? The Bible says those who are make, they're peacemakers who shall see God. Envy, self-seeking, confusion. It's paralyzing to the soul. And it prevents an individual from reaching beyond themselves. Think about addiction. And I'm talking about all kinds of addictions. Gambling, pornography, whatever it may be. Drugs, alcohol. Self, self's an addiction. They can't go, they can't reach beyond themselves. Short-sighted. Everything is about me, myself, and I. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. But as it's written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Why? Because they can't reach beyond themselves. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Look, you can have the Holy Ghost and still not hear. Somebody, you can pray in tongues and still not hear. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the spirit of God. There must be a yielding operation and process and cooperation. That means you are looking beyond yourself and you are reaching beyond you. That's Why do people get offended? 
Think about that. Look at everybody's going to be offended at some time. It's what you do with it. And you got to ask yourself, why am I offended? Well, this person shouldn't speak to me that way. Oh, shut up. Don't be offended the way somebody speaks to you. It doesn't matter. Does everybody understand that? You may be offended, but you got to forgive, don't you? See, the enemy is always trying to get you in a place of unforgiveness. Then you really become blinded. He always wants to put the blinders back on. Well, they disrespected me. Welcome to the earth. Of course, you know, if somebody's disrespectful, that means they can't see beyond themselves anyway. But you still got to forgive them. Forgiveness is a place where you're moving beyond yourself. I'm telling you, right now, the Spirit is releasing so much revelation in the area where people are so caught up in themselves, they can't see beyond themselves, and they can't reach beyond themselves. It's me, 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 and me. Or me, myself, and I, the trinity of self. Amen. Well, what about me? Hello? What about him? Look at what he went through. Amen. For us to be free, not to entangle ourselves again in the affairs of this world and not mistrust or be worried or fear or offended. See, if you can't see the other person's heart, does everybody get it? You'll never understand them. There's people you're never going to understand until you can go beyond yourself and see, reach, see what they see, hear what they hear, feel what they feel. Does everybody get it? That's called ministering. You're not a true minister if you can't do that. If you're opinionated, you make quick choices without seeing things through. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the what? The natural man, the carnal man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Look, at you can pray in tongues and be filled with the Spirit and still be carnal. Because if you're not yielding to that side, you're yielding to the flesh. What side you're yielding to is it. It depends. I don't understand. And I've seen people can pray in tongues, got a beautiful tongue language, and they're heathen. So all they wanted to do is they wanted to get high. They, I mean, they coming in and out of programs constantly. Why? Because they can't y reach beyond themselves. And they make every excuse to get high. You know? Hallelujah. Unable to see. Praise God. Unable to see or hear only the things pertaining to themselves. What about me? James 4, verse 1. It's amazing how many people will pray, pray, pray. Lord, I, I want this, I want this, I mean, I, I need a job, I need this, I need a car, I need this, and this, and God sends it. Well, oh, I don't like it. <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't, I'm really, I, I, thank you for, I don't like it. It just doesn't work to my desire. Test number 14,522. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your what? Your selfish desires for pleasure that war in your members. 
You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war. Yet you do not have because you don't ask correctly. You ask and don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your selfishness. Adulterers and adulteresses. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? So those who cannot see beyond or reach beyond themselves are called carnal. They are friends of the world. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's why some people are, they just, they can't submit to God because they can't reach beyond themselves, and they're always having a struggle. There's always something. Every time you turn around, there's something. Limitations of growth to reach beyond self. Through the power of pride, no resistance to demonic influence, losing the, their place in the plan of escape, which is through grace. They always recycle. Psalm 38, verse 9. Lord, all my desires before you, and my sign is not hidden from you. My heart pants, my strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My loved ones and my friends stand aloft from my plague. My relatives stand afar off. Those also who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan what? Deception all the day long. But I, like a deaf man, don't hear. I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus, I am like a man who does not hear and whose mouth is what? No response. For in you, O Lord, I do what? I put my hope. You will hear, O Lord my God, for I said, hear me, lest they rejoice over me, lest when my foot does slip, they exalt themselves against me. Wow. Wow. Let me tell you that evil <laughs> lays snares for us every single day. We must be able to reach beyond ourself and have a living hope in Christ. It must be activated all the time. You know, I always look at uh, living hope is like jumping over the snare. Now there's a snare. Whee! No touch me. Can't touch me, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Find it. To reach beyond yourself, you must first deny yourself. Pick up the cross and fight. Amen. You must first do what? Deny yourself. So you can reach beyond yourself. 1 Corinthians 9, 19. Although I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all. That's living beyond yourself, isn't it? We are a servant to all. That I might win the more. And to the Jews, I became as Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the laws. To those who are without law, as without law, 
not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. So you wouldn't be able to go beyond yourself if you're not willing to be all things. Amen. A servant of all, reaching beyond yourself. It takes discipline. Everybody understand it? Everyone say discipline. All right, let's go a little further then. Verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is tempered in all things. Now, they do it to obtain the perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus not with uncertainty. Thus I fight not as one who beats the air, but I do what? I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Wow. Again, a servant to all reaching beyond oneself. It will take discipline. And it takes the foundation of a routine. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5. As for the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Is everybody there? Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same suffering which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the Word tells us about it's vitally important that we examine ourselves to know whether we are in the flesh or in the faith. So you'll know whether you're in the faith or in the flesh. Why? Because faith is going beyond oneself and the flesh is not going beyond oneself. It's that simple. Hello? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. We are the, he's testing the genuineness of your faith. There's a difference between genetic and generic. Amen? There's a lot of imitation out there. Only the genetic and genuine go beyond themselves to reach the promises of God and the fruits of manifestation for his glory. Now I'm going to close in Ephesians 4, 25.
therefore put away lying. In other words, lying to yourself. Let each of you speak truth in his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor. Working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. That's calling going beyond yourself. Did Jesus go beyond himself? Yeah. This is how we should live beyond ourselves. But it takes a denying of yourself. Amen? And you must see beyond yourself. Hear beyond yourself. Sense, feel beyond yourself. So that you know where somebody else is coming from. Amen? That takes hearing. Not listening. Because a lot of people go, yeah, 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 and don't hear a stinking thing. Self-opinionated. The world is a mess, but God is straightening it up. The body of Christ is a mess, but God is cleaning it up. It's happening. The wannabes and the willabies. There's a difference between a doer and not a doer. There's a difference between one who hears and one who just listens. There's one who, a difference between one who sees and doesn't. And there's one who goes beyond himself and their self and one who doesn't. Amen? And you'll know them by their fruits or their desire. It's a time we are in right now. God is trying to protect his people from making wrong choices. It's vital. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your guidance and your help and ability to go beyond ourselves, reaching beyond ourselves and reaching unto you in every good thing. And whatever we choose to do, Lord, may it be according to your will and your way and your glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.